Oh man, how could you not like nighttime gardening? Well, it's been three days, but it's been quite warm. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Cauliflower snowballs already germinating. Right on. Foliar feeding. What is it? Can you benefit from it? Is it good for the plants? Should you be doing it? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Welcome to my, my greenhouse jungle. So today, I'd like to talk about foliar feeding. But first off, what is foliar feeding? So foliar feeding is the act of taking a liquid fertilizer and spraying it on the leaves of your vegetable plants. As you know, the most traditional method of applying fertilizer to your plants would be to add either a dry or a liquid fertilizer to the soil for the plant to take up through its roots. And so before we get into foliar feeding, let's talk about the issue with fertilizing your plants the traditional way. So studies have shown that feeding your plants through the roots can often take up to two days for those nutrients to reach the top of the plant. Obviously this depends on how large your plant is, but that's an extraordinary amount of time and a lot can happen to that fertilizer in the soil in between those 48 hours. Now, the second issue that studies have shown, obviously related to the first issue, is that on average, only about 10% of the fertilizer applied to the soil is actually used by the plant. So obviously, if it's taking one to two days for that fertilizer in the soil to make it to the top of the plant, there's going to be some losses. Now I'm pretty skeptical that 90% of the fertilizer is lost completely, but still, even if it's 50%, that's too much. So foliar feeding is almost the exact opposite as traditional fertilizing. And so the way it's commonly done is you would take your regular liquid fertilizer, probably dilute it in half or even by 75%, and then you would atomize it either in a spray bottle or a backpack sprayer and you would apply it to the leaves of your vegetables. So already you can see the difference in the application of the two fertilizing methods and over a large area and depending on what kind of plants you're growing, you know, foliar feeding can be a lot more difficult delivery method of fertilizing. Now fortunately for the backyard gardener, we don't really have those problems. So the application of foliar feeding is pretty easy and you shouldn't run into any difficulties. So getting that out of the way, what are the benefits and should you be foliar feeding your vegetable plants? Well, in my opinion, the answer is an emphatic yes. Jesus. That would be the timer. So foliar feeding is a definite yes for me for two reasons. Now the first reason is because it works, but I don't just wanna say that it works. I wanna get into why it works. And so the reason why foliar feeding is so effective is that the plants can use the nutrients in this fertilizer almost instantly. So as we talked about before with traditional root fertilizing, it can take up to two days for the plant to send those nutrients from the roots to the apical meristem, which would be the top of the plant. But with foliar feeding, it goes in through the stomata and it is available for the plant to use almost instantly. And this is important because if you find you have a deficient plant 
and you know what the deficiency is, you can quickly apply that nutrient profile and get that plant back on track right away. And the other reason is, it's very cost effective. So not only are you already cutting down this fertilizer in half or three quarters by diluting it, but also studies have shown that the plant is using up to 95% of the nutrients you apply to the leaves. So there's little to no wastage. So whether you're making your own fertilizers, like I've shown you before, or whether you're buying fertilizers from the store, foliar feeding is saving you time and money by using far less of your fertilizers. Now, before I show you how I foliar feed, I just wanted to give you some anecdotal evidence of why foliar feeding is simply a must in a modern organic garden. You know, since I started foliar feeding about four years ago, you know, I've noticed far less pests. I've noticed far stronger plants and I've noticed a higher production of fruit and vegetables. Now, some of this can be attributed to, you know, my compost getting better and better and better. Um, obviously, my raised beds using the lasagna gardening method are getting more and more organic matter. So obviously, the plants are going to be getting better and better. But I've noticed this even in potted plants where my potting mixture hasn't changed in five years. You know, the potting mix, and I'll throw a link down below, that I invented five years ago, I haven't really changed the formula. But since foliar feeding, you know, I've seen production go through the roof. So yeah, it's anecdotal, but even still, I can't do anything but recommend foliar feeding. So if you followed my video on how to make your own fertilizer, you know, using the weeds in your garden, you would know that it's a completely safe fertilizer to throw onto your vegetable plants. So the great thing is if you use, you know, an organic, safe, foliar feeding fertilizer, you can spray your tomatoes and your peppers and your watermelon. And it doesn't matter if they get fertilizer on them, you know, because you're using an organic, non-toxic chemical. So two last points before we get into a demonstration with this uh, cherry tomato plant here on how I foliar feed. Number one, you've got to foliar feed at night. And there's two reasons for this. You know, just like you don't water during the heat of the day, because those water droplets can actually turn into magnifying glasses and they can burn your leaves. Well, liquid fertilizer droplets can do the same thing. But also, foliar feeding is only effective at night. And the reason for this is, is during the day, the plant's stomata, their pores are closed. Why are they closed? Well, they're closed to hold the moisture into the leaves. You know, as soon as they open, that would be all their moisture gone, especially in the heat of the day. So at nighttime, when it's cool out, your vegetable plants will open their stomata. This is the time when you need to foliar feed. Hence why I'm out here at midnight. Now, you don't have to wait till midnight, but you should wait until at least sunset, you know, when it's a, when it's a little bit cooler. Okay, so you gotta foliar feed at night. The other thing is, is you gotta use a weaker solution. You gotta cut your regular liquid fertilizer in half or by three quarters. You know, the reason for this is, at regular strength, you know, some fertilizers could burn your leaves. And because so much of the fertilizer is used, don't worry about making a weak solution. This isn't like fertilizing through the roots. So, fertilize at night, weaker solution, that's all you gotta do. So, let's fertilize this guy. So, as you can see, this guy's got a ton of juicy tomatoes on him. You know, he's probably not in need of a liquid fertilizer. But what a demonstration plant to use. I had to use this guy. So I usually put mine on a fine mist. You know, there's no point blowing the leaves apart with the jet spray. Um, and you also get more coverage. You know, the, the fertilizer can go up and under the leaves, which is totally great. You know, some guys suggest actually fertilizing from underneath because that's where the majority of the stomata is. But I find just put it on a heavy mist and get as much coverage as you can. And again, with this organic fertilizer, don't worry about hitting those tomatoes. It's not going to do anything to them.
there you go. That's it. So this is a lot better when you have a bunch of plants so that the overspray just hits the plant next to it. That way you're not wasting any valuable liquid fertilizer. But, you know, this was just for demonstration purposes. You know, if I was doing this, I would probably line up, you know, 50 of these guys and just do them all at once. So there you go. Foliar feeding. It is a very inexpensive, very effective way to maximize your yields in your organic garden. It's completely safe if you're using your own fertilizers that you make. You know, and if you're not, if you're buying your fertilizer, maybe check with the manufacturer or the distributor of what sort of chemicals are in that thing and make sure they're safe to be spraying on your vegetables. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for joining me late at night once again. As always, leave some questions or comments down below. Let us know, are you foliar fertilizing? If you are, what kind of fertilizer are you using? How are you doing it? How long have you been doing it? What are the sort of results you're getting? I'd love to hear. Click subscribe if you haven't already. For those of you that have, I appreciate the support. I really do. And I'll see you guys next time.